Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of May 2014 and it is called Kickstarting Your Short Film. Here, let me turn, put my little popper stopper on the microphone. Here we go. Now no more, no more pops. So uh, I was asked a lot after my, well, why am I doing this right now? Because I am putting the very, very finishing touches on the little painter. It is just a tiny little tweak to a sound effect here, a little bit of mixing there. Um, very, very, very close. In fact, I'm probably going to finish today, but I don't want to uh, jinx it and, um, and, and then go into next week. And so I, I'm doing this lecture because um, the month is almost over, so uh, I want to get this in your guys' hands. I'm asked or I was asked a lot right after my campaign ended um, what my strategies were, and that kind of um, died out as, um, as time went on. And the, there are some really tried and true strategies, and there are some things that you can find online that give you some great advice on how to use Kickstarter to fund your short film. But I wanted to give you guys, the members of KennyRoy.com, sort of like an exclusive guide as to how I think I found success and where you guys can replicate that and do that. And here's what I'm going to say right off the bat. This is my pledge to you guys. It's literally a pledge. If you guys take this advice and put together a Kickstarter campaign for your short film, all right, send it to me and I will take a look over your entire project. When you make a project on Kickstarter, it gives you a page that you can send to friends before you make the project live. So send me that link. I'll take a look at it. I'll help you get it as good as it possibly can be. Okay. And I will be your first pledge. And I will pledge because I had 508 backers and I raised $50,246. The average was about 100 bucks. I will be your first pledger at $100. Every single one of you that does this. Do you understand? I will pledge to your films because you guys supported me, you guys made this happen, and I want to see it happen for you, okay? But there's a lot that you have to do in order to get there, okay? So, um, where are we going to be begin? We're going to begin with your story. Your story has got to be king. It is absolutely the most important part of your Kickstarter campaign is making sure that your story is fantastic. Now, I don't want to be peddling um, my crap too much, but my book on short film, Finish Your Film, is not an appropriate title. Isn't this hysterical? I, I, in the time it took me to finally get Little Painter done, I wrote a book, and it's called Finish Your Freaking Film. Anyway, um, in this book, I talk at length in the story chapter about how to actually use an iterative process, an editing process, to get to your best version of your story. Um, to paraphrase it just a little bit for you guys, the real root of your story is, uh, and, and by the way, this came, I, I wrote this before the, those Pixar 22 you know, rules of storytelling. Um, the real root of your story is the beginning and the end. Because the beginning is where you set up your theme and the end is where you make your opinion of that theme. Is where you, you, you show what you want to happen to people and characters and, and, and societies and worlds or whatever if they either agree with you or they disagree with you on that theme. Okay, if, if your theme is generosity and somebody is like an old Scrooge and whatever and you have them get squished by a bus, then obviously they disagree with you and you, you punish them as the creator of this universe, okay? Um, 
So the beginning and the end of your story, start there. There's a lot of other tips on how to hone your story um, in this book, and, and I, I suggest you at least uh, check it out. Uh, and also we can talk um, a lot about it. I would like if we could have um, a regular webcast, maybe every couple months or so, where we all come together and if we're working on short films, we can be... Um, we can be talking, we can be discussing and helping each other and working that kind of stuff out. Those story ideas, the, you know, the iterative approach, editing your stories, that kind of thing. I would really, really, really love that. But um, at any rate, back to what we're, we're talking about, which is um, Kickstarter. Your story has to be good enough that the, the pitch of your story can be put into uh, a Kickstarter video without the... Um, without giving everything away, but at the same time having enough that it hooks your audience. Okay, I had the advantage that Pierre is a super cute guy. He's just an ultra super cute kind of guy. So um, that really, really, really um, played in my favor because people just wanted to see this cute little painter um, on an adventure wherever it took him. So that being the case, um, I would consider also doing a little bit of pre-production and getting to a point where you like you absolutely need funding um, to to move on with your with your with your short. So, for instance, um, uh, I, I'm reminded of this story that I heard that um, who said it. It was a celebrity, and I can't remember who it was, but I also thought it was like very unlike what I would expect to hear from this certain celebrity. But at any rate, um, he or she said, um, if you notice, if there's somebody like on the side of the road and they're just sitting next to their car and their car is broken down, nobody stops. Or if they're sitting inside their car and you know, you know, there's you know, smoke coming out or whatever, nobody stops. If you get out, though, and let's say it's a flat tire, even if you have no idea how to do a flat tire, if you just start fumbling with the, a tire iron and, like, you know, you're nothing, you have no idea what you're doing, people will stop. Somebody will stop, and they will help you, and they will change your tire for you. Why? It's because people like to help people that look like they are willing to help themselves, willing to work to get what they want, okay? So in terms of this, in terms of running a successful campaign, if you, you are much better off doing a Kickstarter campaign to finish a film than you are to basically create a, um, something that is like entirely uh, brand new or like needs everything on that. So by the time I did my Kickstarter, I had the whole thing boarded. Um, I had recorded a scratch track. I had modeled all of the main characters' heads. They were modular. Um, Pierre was completely modeled and rigged and textured. Um, I had done some animation tests with Pierre, and I was at the point where I, you know, I felt like I had enough that I could show where I was and what I wanted to do with the film. Okay. So um, that's, that's, a, that's kind of an important point. So in terms of the pledge that I've made to you already, which is that I will be your first pledge on your Kickstarter page at $100, you better make sure, though, that you pick a good moment for you to create that project. Because um, I, I, I have very little faith in a project uh, that has like no artwork no boards, no designs, like like nothing behind it, um, getting really any support. I, I have very little faith in, in that happening. I will still pledge, if even if you don't have all those things, I will be your first pledge at $100, but I don't know if um, you're going to get much um, in the way of a, uh, of a goal if you, if you do do that, okay? Um, I will also promote your guys' Kickstarters on my Facebook and my Twitter, and I will do everything I can to drive traffic to your Kickstarter page as well, okay? So I really want to support everyone that's that's here, especially all of you, and you know who you are, 
you know, who has been we been with me from the beginning, like Nicole and Indie Pops and um, Eugene, like all you guys, you guys know. And if I missed your name, there's too many of you to name. All right, so I apologize. But all you guys that have been with me since like the beginning, like I especially want to um, support you guys um, making it a, like a, a foray into short film and really putting your stamp on something. Okay. So I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen for you guys. Just one w- small way I can give back for all the generosity that was shown me um, for The Little Painter. And I'm so excited to show it to you guys. I am so excited. Um, it's really very cute. Forgive me for a second. <clears throat> I need to get a uh, Altoid. Ooh, I'm going to take a sip of old uh, iced coffee. That's not bad. Just wet the whistle a little bit. Okay. Um, so that was all going back to helping yourself. Okay. So, um, obviously if you have artwork that is unreal, that's really going to bring people out of the woodwork. I would suggest you partner with each other or maybe not even each other, but like find like a designer, find like a concept artist or or whatever. Even at the point when you're looking for story ideas, if you're totally inspired by one image, um, I have some people that bookmarked or, or like on my Pinterest and whatever, like uh, um, who's who's a good one, like Dan Luvisi and um, um, uh, is it James Zapata? Was it Chris Zapata? I can't remember. Um, I just have like the, the, like single images give me ideas for like feature films, just like this one image. Um, and uh, contact these people. Nobody walks on water. This is all an industry of artists and earnest people trying to, like, you know, tell a story at the end of the day. Work with each other, okay? And you might notice that there are, there is a lot more openness to collaboration than you might have thought. Um, even people who are, like, featured on like, the front page of, like, ZBrush Daily or whatever with this insane character. If you look at that character and you're like, oh my god, I know exa- I know all about that character. Like he's got weird like robotic tentacles or whatever, but that, that's the planet he's from. Or I could do a short where he lands and then he's looking around and then like this monster comes out, whatever. You s- save all that. Like record a video like I'm doing right now and send it to that ZBrush artist. And say like, oh, this is the short I want to do and whatever. And, and then we'll work together until like we can't anymore and we need help and then we'll do a Kickstarter. Right? they'll they'll go for it okay i really really want to foster collaboration i really want to foster a a a heightened sense of togetherness because the internet it was designed to bring us together but it didn't really do that did it we have more connections but we have a lot less stronger connections or we have a lot weaker connections than we than we've ever had and it's only getting worse right Um, The people who you know online and virtually, um, you are not making connections with them on the same level that we used to have to in in reality. Um, So um, I'm trying to show, at least in the animation community and especially the artist community of, 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 um, um, you know... uh, like designers and whatever, everyone's a lot closer to each other than than I think we even realize, or at, at least how we like treat each other, how we behave. I would say, okay. So please, um, so that's trying to get enough like artwork or whatever um, to launch your project. Now, how much should you um, ask for? This is a huge thing, and there's a lot of guides, and this is pretty much the thing that most of the guides that you can find online are based on. Uh, or not based on, but are, um, um, uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're written about mostly like how to price your, your, your project. It was very simple for me because I have Arconix, and... Um, I simply couldn't put any free time towards uh, the little painter anymore, and I said to myself, "Well, okay, if I was going to budget this, and it was, I was going to budget this like at cost, like what would this cost?" And that was it. Okay, for you guys, I think you need to take a couple things into consideration. Um, it is not unheard of, or it is not frowned upon to say that you need some of the money 
to like survive, like to live. We're artists and we have hard costs and it's normally the rest of our lives that prevents us from doing what we love, from, from like creating a short film that really inspires us or, you know, like, like had in a dream and just would, just would, you know, it would be a dream come true to see it. Um, uh, literally. So like there's, there's, don't sell yourself short of, of um, when you're pricing your project by like saying like, well, you know, this is everything that's going to cost like a little bit of money, but that's all I can say is in the budget because, you know, I, I feel bad asking people, you know, if it's going to cost, like, let's say you're, I, I know people's rent is not this, but let's say your rent is like 800 bucks or something like that, right? I don't know. Maybe maybe you're renting a room in LA. That's that's insane. That's like renting one room, like in a, you know, and you have four of the roommates. But anyway, say your rent is eight hundred bucks. If it's going to take you two months of dedicated work, you're you're out, you're out of the job right now. So it's the perfect time for you to start a short film. Um, it's going to take you two months of dedicated work, but you still have to pay rent. I would I would put that in there. So if your hard cost, like purchasing models. Um, paying a concept artist for, for, for his time. He's giving you a break, you know, because it's, you know, a, a personal short film. He's being really nice, but you need a little bit of dough for that. Um, maybe you want to, maybe you want to pay for a little bit of render time, like on a render farm. I used foxrenderfarm.com um, for the little painter. The all-in cost of the rendering on the little painter was something like three or four grand. Um, it, it it's a lot less than it would than it would be for me to like use my render farm here in power and time and and hardware and software costs so like there's something that like you had to build in now granted little painter was was pretty complex even though the look i know you haven't seen it yet so it's kind of like odd for me to describe it even though the look is sort of like gestural and and sort of simplistic it was actually very complicated to get to that point so um, actually had to spend a lot of money to get to a, a sort of like a more natural, almost simplistic look. But at any rate, um, once you budget all those things together, then just tack your rent on because you, you are asking people for not just the money to make this film, and this is what I'm going to get into um, in just a second, you're also asking them for the opportunity for you personally to do something with your life. All right, and that's what I wanted to move on to next. I'm going to tell you guys a little story. <clears throat> um, I was standing at my fence, and this this guy comes up to me. I, I I say guy. He was like a he was like a kid though. I couldn't tell how how old he was, but anyway, I can tell. I, I I swear to God, I can tell like in an instant looking at somebody if they're a good or a bad person. I could tell this guy was like was a was a sleaze bag. Anyway, comes up totally in my face. I was standing at my fence. I think I just got my mail and I was closing my fence, right? And he walks right up and he goes, um, "Hey man, I'm selling some magazines. I want to know if you're uh, you're interested." And um, I said, I, I actually didn't catch it all. I knew he was a solicitor, but I didn't catch it all. I wanted to make sure I got it right. I said, did you say you're, you're, you're selling something? Sorry. He says, yeah, yeah, I'm selling magazines for college. How general can you get, right? I'm selling magazines for college. Want to know if you're interested. Um, I have, and he started going, launching into it. And I said, um, I, I said, I'm going to stop you right there. I actually don't read anything in print. Every, everything I read is online. I have a Kindle. I have a, uh, I have a. I have an iPad. I, you know, for like New York Times. Um, you know, I, I don't read anything in print. And this is what he said. And this really pissed me off. He goes, "Yeah, well, no, no one really reads magazines anymore. But um, a couple of your neighbors um, uh, just gave a donation. A couple of your neighbors uh, paid for a subscription." But they they um, they're not they're not gonna take the magazine. And that really pissed me off. Why? Because what he's trying to do he's trying to play on me, play on my like in like sensitivity and insecurity that I want to like compete with my neighbors. That I don't want to be seen as less generous than the people who live on the left and right of me. Like how dare he? All right, how dare he? Uh, and this is what I told him. I said. Listen, I have no, I have no problem 
not giving you um, any money if my neighbors gave you money. And here's what I'm going to do though for you. All right. Uh, how much is how much is like the cheapest subscription or whatever? And he says like nine nine nine, so like ten bucks. I said okay, I'm going to give you a piece of advice that is worth far more than 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 ten dollars. Okay, so this is the, this is the most valuable thing that's going to happen to you today, and I guarantee you it is. And 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 you want to know why? Because I raised fifty thousand dollars in thirty days last year. All right, so I know what I'm talking about. And this is, this is what you have to do. You walked up to me and you said, hey, would you like to buy some magazines uh, for college? Or I'm selling magazines for college, is what you said. And then you proceeded to try to make me feel guilty to, to give you money. All right? You, that might work on some people, but you completely underestimate how much people want to help you. So this is what you say from now on, and this and it and and, and I hope you know what, what. However much of this is true for you, take from this what you will in terms of like the tone and what you really need to be saying to people. You say to them, "Hi, my name is your name." Okay, so me. My name is Kenny. I really want to go to college. My family can't afford it. And I have worked my ass off in school to get a partial scholarship to go to the school that I want to. When I'm there, I'm going to study engineering. Engineering is what I've always wanted to do with my life. I will be the first person in my family to go to college. And what I need is just a little bit more money for my tuition. And today, I'm asking you to buy a magazine subscription. I'm going to put all that money towards my education. I'm going to put all that money towards becoming an engineer, which is a dream of mine. It's a dream of my parents and my grandparents who immigrated here. My entire family wants to see this happen. And now, I'm only, I'm only asking you for a little bit of your time if you're not interested in any of these magazines, I get it. If if you think you uh, if you think that I deserve a chance to go to college, even if you don't want to buy a magazine, I I would appreciate I would, I'd appreciate so much a donation. And um, and I'll tell you what, if if that is what you do, and I do make enough money this summer to afford tuition to school next year. I'm going to send you a postcard from, from my dorm that says, thank you so much for making this happen. And that's what you're going to receive in the mail. In fact, I guarantee you you're going to receive that in the mail because I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop today. I'm not going to stop tomorrow. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop until I've made my dream come true. Now, would you like to help me? And if not, no hard feelings. I, I want you to have a beautiful rest of your day and, and, um, and we can part ways. But if you do want to help, I will be forever in your debt. Will you help me make my dream come true? I said that to the guy. And he just rolled his eyes and walked away. And I think he swore at me. <clears throat> but here's the point. The point is never underestimate how many people are surrounding you right now that will like leap at the chance to help a dream come true. And here's why. People's dreams are very, very, very difficult to make come true. They're hard to make come true, especially for you know ourselves. When we are given, as human beings, an opportunity to contribute in any small way towards a real dream coming true, it is like, it is like crack cocaine. Nothing feels better than seeing a real dream come to life. Nothing in the world. Okay? I, I, no, I can't tell you, I can't tell you about this. All right, I, I was, I'm sorry. I know it's weird now that I'm explaining what I can't tell you, but I, I was, I was going to go into an anecdote of a, a, a moment that I had in my life. It's a little too personal, but it's, it's, it really supports the idea of, 
um, making a dream come true. So that's what you have to, that's where you start, okay? That's where you start. What that means is you, you can't do it if it's not sincere. I think everybody knows that the little painter was literally a dream, but also a, a, a figurative and, and very powerful dream of mine to see this thing come true. Um, um, all of the earnest and sincerity that was in my Kickstarter video, which I'll talk about in a second, um, was very, very real. Very real. And I was very surprised. I had a feeling that in 30 days I would hit my goal because I, like, I would not stop. I wouldn't stop. There was, there was no alternative to hitting my goal. No alternative. It had to. But um, I was surprised with how many people really like appeared and surrounded a, a, a dream coming true. And it doesn't surprise me anymore because I've thought a lot about it. But that's how it's, that's how it's really come together um, as, the, as the most important thing, okay? So you have to make sure that whatever project you're doing is not on a whim. And it's, you, 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 like if you are, like for instance, going back to the example where I say like if you see a piece of concept art and you're like, oh, that's, that's the, the thing that I want to do. I'm going to make a short out of that. It can't be like, like I just did. It can't be like a whim or whatever. You have to be like, oh my God. Like that is, that is everything that like artistically and like spiritually in a way and like philosophically, that is the thing. I've been waiting for this my whole life. Like that's how you have to react to that like piece of concept art that you want to turn into a short or whatever. Or maybe you've had an idea for a film your whole life. And you've been like going to sleep uh, thinking about it for forever. If it's sincere, it'll come through. All right, so let's move on to the Kickstarter video. You need to do what I did, uh, that demonstration I did to that magazine salesman. Um, you need to get that across. I would open by talking about a, a little bit about the film, okay? Show the artwork, and then as, as, as almost as soon as possible, talk about what it means to you. Show us why our help will be making a dream come true. We'll be making, we'll be giving another human being an opportunity to truly realize happiness, okay? Because if you're out of the job, maybe you graduate and you haven't had a job yet, you're very frustrated, you've got the chops, you know you can animate, all right? And you're gonna give yourself two months to do like a one minute short or whatever it is. <clears throat> Show us why those two months you're going to look back when you're like 85 and you're still going to think about those two months of like going to bed at 4 a.m. and only eating pizza and Red Bull. Still the fondest memories you have. Show us why. Okay? Don't, here's some things to avoid. Do not explain in detail in the video what the budget's for. Do not um, do not break it down or anything like that. Um, you can do that on the page, but I don't recommend getting too much into it in the video. The video should be about introducing you, establishing that you're a good guy or a good girl. You've got a dream. We can help make it happen. Here's a little bit about it. Here's what it is. Look, look how beautiful it looks already. And to make this would be like the, the, the crowning achievement of my life so far. Okay? That's what you should do. Too many Kickstarter videos have are, are, are rely far too much on the production value. They rely a little bit too much on gags. They rely a little bit too much on um, like other extraneous things. I wouldn't do any of that stuff. Even if I did another one, I wouldn't do any of that stuff. Okay, so like, you know, someone popping their head in your, your, you know, the video opens, someone pops their head in like, hey, Kenny, what are you doing? And then you turn, uh, 
Or I turn, uh, you know, I'm just working on this amazing short film. Oh, what's it called? Like, like setting up all this BS. No, 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 no. Because they're not, your, your, your backers are not there to kind of like get entertained and then they'll pledge based on how kind of clever your video was. Your video has to be sincere and it has to actually show us how we are helping you touch the impossible, grab something that you would never be able to, okay? Um, and it's true, and as long as it's sincere, um, um, people will surprise the hell out of you. They'll come out of nowhere and help you, okay? And I was very, I was very surprised, okay? But, but in retrospect, I'm, I'm not, because it was totally sincere. This, this is a dream. This is a dream of mine, okay? So, um, <clears throat> next thing. <clears throat> how to figure out your rewards and how to figure out how you're going to run your campaign. People have said that the campaign is almost like a full-time job and they're kind of right. There is so you're you're checking, you're refreshing, you're sending comments back and forth, you're like in touch with people, you're you're trying to promote it, you're trying not to do too much, you're trying not to do too little. Um, this is what I would say about running your campaign: the more preparation and 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 promotion you can do running up to the launch of your campaign, the better. You want people to basically know about it. Everybody who's going to donate, you want them to know about it long before you even launch. And the way I did that, I don't think that this is like the way to do it. I'm just saying one way. The way I did that is I promoted my 24-hour animation marathon. Now, since then, Twitch.tv, which is a gaming site, it's like you watch video game streamers, has become very, very, very popular. And Twitch streamers do 24-hour streams often. Um, normally, like the popular guys do like one, like a month, okay? So like a 24-hour marathon is not a very super special thing in gaming. I, st I think it's a very super special thing in animation. It's hard to animate for that long. It's a little easier to play video games, honestly. But what's the point? Point is, is that if you have a launch event, then that you can promote and everybody knows about it and knows this is this is why this is happening this is what we are doing let's go ahead and let's go ahead and you know pledge um, then they will and it is a mathematical fact that if you get oh I can't remember what exactly it is it's probably changed a little bit too so I'll, I'll be rough if you get over 30 percent of your funding you have an 80 percent it's somewhere around there uh, chance of getting 100% of your funding. Or another way to put it is 80% of projects that get at least 30% get the full 100, okay? Um, so as, as, as quick as you can rush up to that 30% mark, the better. Because then everybody will want to promote it um, for you. That's the next thing. You need to get people, excuse me, that was gross. I know it was gross. I apologize for it. Maybe you didn't hear it. That's eh, a good mic. We'll see. I'll play it back. Maybe I'll uh, I'll just uh, mix mix the uh, mic down at that moment when I burped. Um, <clears throat> you want to, if you can, get people to promote it for you. You want people. You want your network working for you. Okay. It helps to have a lot of Facebook friends. It helps, really helps to have a lot of Facebook friends um, in terms of the promotion. But what you'll see is that there's not a lot of money that, it, that comes from direct referral from Facebook. And I'm going to show you guys today, I'm going to show you my whole stats. All right, normally these things don't, uh, you, you know, you don't get to see these things. I'm going to show you guys the full stats of the, um, of the Kickstarter project. Maybe I should have mentioned that first. Maybe you uh, wouldn't have turned this off uh, by now. Um... But you want to get people to um, talk about it. So I got pe I was announcing a month in advance the 24-hour animation marathon, okay? And a month was a perfect amount of time for my network. At that point, I had like maybe 3,000 Facebook friends. Um, that was about 
as much time as I needed to make sure that everyone pretty much knew about it. I knew that if I could get people to the marathon and I played my pitch video right at the beginning, and that was the moment that I went live on, on, um, on Kickstarter as well. If I played the pitch video, um, that they would see my sincerity, they would see my ambition to get something like this done, and they would more than likely um, pledge at that moment. You don't want people to look at it and then say like, oh, I'll see where this, I'll see where this goes. You want people to click on the remind me button. There's a little button on every Kickstarter page that says remind me. And like I think like a day or two before the funding ends, you can you'll you'll get a little email that says, Hey, this is about to end. Do you are you sure you don't want to miss it? Um, you don't want that to happen. Okay. Some some of the reasons here's one reason. Um, some some people would pledge higher if they saw that. Um, some of the exclusive rewards were still available. But for instance, on, well, a, a good example is the um, one that's going on right now. It's two days in and it's almost three million bucks is the Reading Rainbow. LeVar Burton is bringing back Reading Rainbow. Um, um, there's some exclusive rewards, like like dinner with LeVar Burton. They're all gone, right? So... You want people to see the page and see the exact reward that they they want and to, to get it right then, okay? Um, um, so let me show you something that I think is going to kind of, you know, seal the deal for you guys on the launch event. So here is a graph of the, the funding of my project. I launched March 4th, ended on April 4th, okay? And it says 50,246, 170% funded, 508 backers. But look at this graph. My 24-hour animation marathon, basically my, my goal was 29,500, okay? This is my goal right there, right under 30,000, okay? And look, in the first day, 9,718, okay? And then that, that momentum continued through the next day, okay? In fact, this, this only goes from like noon to noon, so this is the actually the end. This, I think this is midnight. So it was basically 15,000, but from noon to noon, 9,718. 9,718 is almost exactly 30% of 29,000, okay? almost exactly so and then by the time two days had gone by I was basically at 20,000 okay basically um, and so that's that's 66% uh, funded that was two-thirds funded okay right here a backer removed a large um, pledge and then they put it back right here. And then I was on a steady slope of people. And you'll see in the, uh, the analytics below, um, this, is, th this slope is due to people basically re-watching the 24-hour marathon and pledging through the widget that was on the 24-hour marathon webpage. All right, and that's that's fully supported by the analy analytics below. This is this is not like you know pimping it on Facebook. This is not like being annoying on Twitter. This is not like making phone calls and emails and whatever. This is actually supported by the launch event that I did. And then the last last day, the last two hours actually of the campaign, I said I'm going to be introducing one last reward that is going to be particularly valuable for students and you're not going to want to miss it so join me for the last um, two hours of funding um, on kennyway.com I did a webcast and then I announced the shot coach which um, about two-thirds of the people who bought the shot coach have um, redeemed it okay so I've helped I've helped about I'm not sure how many how many did it 
<laughs> now, actually. I think about maybe 15 or 16 people got the shot coach, okay? Um, so I've helped about um, nine or 10 of them so far. And um, there's some, been some really awesome shots that have come out of it. And, I, and it also like, makes me wonder, like, I wonder what the people who are holding on to it are, are holding on to it for. Man, they must really like, think it's going to come in handy someday. Anyway, hope they haven't forgotten. If you're one of the people that have the shot coach, it's still redeemable. It's, it's redeemable for life. Anytime you want to use it, okay? So it hasn't gone away. Anyway, so when I redeem, revealed the shot coach, a lot of people who did the shot coach actually bumped up their donation or their pledge instead of like new pledges. It was about it was about 60-40. 60% were people that had pledged like in the $100 or $200 range and then kicked it up to the $600 range. And then um, 40% were, were new, all right? So it's like 60-40. But if you look at this graph, there's no denying the importance of a launch event and the importance of having a, 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 a super exclusive, valuable um, reward that will get people excited, okay? There's, there's no denying that, okay? <clears throat> so hopefully that, that, hopefully that gives you a little bit of, um, of uh, insight here. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to show you is the um, refers, the referrals, okay? Let's make sure that I have it um, all queued up here. Okay, so <clears throat> pledged via Kickstarter. This is people that don't have a referral um, cookie on their computer. So this is, this is really literally people who are on Kickstarter and are are just browsing around and they're going through film and then they're going into animation maybe and they're seeing the projects. My project was one of the highest um, totals for an animation at that time. Actually, I think, I think it was the second highest. It was the second or third highest, okay? Um, so when you went to, when you went to um, uh, the homepage and you went to film or then you went to animation, it actually showed you little painter. It says projects successfully or, you know, a project like hot projects or whatever. So I was actually shown there. But still, only 8%, this little piece of the pie, this is only what you can depend on from, um, from uh, through Kickstarter itself. So the website, not really actually very valuable in terms of promoting your thing. Via external, 92%, okay? Average pledge amount is almost 100 bucks. Okay, so let's look down here. Check this out. When the referral was from Facebook, okay, it was uh, 9%. Okay, so again, people who looked at the Facebook link and then went and pledged, less than 10%. Okay, so... Another way to look at this is in a successfully funded project, uh, Kickstarter and Facebook combined don't even get you to that threshold, that 30% threshold where you can sort of depend a little bit, you know, breathe a little bit easier from, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, the fact that you're probably going to get funded. You have an 80% chance of getting funded. Facebook and uh, Kickstarter combined, don't. Twitter was Twitter was pathetic, two percent. Um, Googling, you you're not going to come up in any. And then the rest of these, they're all they're all crap. Look where they all came from though. Direct traffic. I happen to know that direct direct traffic was off of my website. <clears throat> okay, when it says no referrer information. Okay, because some people were watching the. Um, live stream on from one of the member pages on my website okay so that's the highest number actually CDN that live stream I used to use live stream for my for my webcast I don't anymore I use a different program live stream another 14 percent so 26 plus 14 boom we're at 40 percent okay and then kennyroy.com 
that's the home page of kennyward.com where the widget is another 20 percent so 60 percent oh and then the embedded widget so this is off of the um, home page sorry and then the embedded widget which was probably on the uh the replay page another 15 percent so we're at 60 plus 15 75 percent so 75 percent of the pledges came from stuff that I set up. Wasn't Facebook, wasn't uh, uh, Kickstarter, wasn't Twitter, wasn't anything like that. It's, it's the, the way of accessing the, the pitch. This is my dream. Help me make my dream come true. Here's me working my ass off for 24 hours straight just to prove to you that I, I believe in this project and I want to make it come true. All those things. Okay, um, all the stuff that I set up to give the backers a glimpse into that project, that process rather, actually uh, made the difference. Okay, let's move on. Project video stats. Okay, check this out. <clears throat> Twelve thousand five hundred and forty-nine people, uh, or, or it was played. Sorry, twelve thousand five hundred and forty-nine um, times. Okay. It was played off-site 2,666 times. All this means is that the, the widget or when it was played off-site um, has to do with all the stuff that I set up. These, this, this is a high amount of plays. It's a very high amount of plays. I don't know. I don't have any st statistics to compare to if that's a high amount of plays for the amount of the number of backers that I have. But I do know that that's a, that's a very good number of plays. That you can you can pretty much you know say that uh, if you're getting that that amount of plays that you're going you're you're doing very well okay um, but this is all people that w that came to uh, the site and watched the pitch on my site so this would be direct traffic or referred to from the widget or from the link that I I put all over kennyroy.com so another another um, good statistic here's the reward popularity. Um, this um, really doesn't apply to, to you guys uh, specifically, mostly because the amount of um, your, your rewards is going to be very, very important. But I will switch to um, talking about rewards right now. There's two things that you have to remember that are vitally important. The first is if you are doing what is normal on Kickstarter, which is to offer all of the rewards below for the, like the higher rewards, you have to factor in the cost of all of those rewards below when you are adding them all up, okay? So, for instance, <clears throat> it might seem like it's a good idea to offer like a t-shirt for $50, $50 because a t-shirt is, you know, you can get one made for made and shipped for like 9 bucks, whatever. That's great. Well, if you also have a poster and a postcard and a DVD for like... 35 20 and and 10 like res not not respectively right and those are only about a 50 percent profit margin okay 35 15 would be 50 and 10 would be 60 so it'd be 30 dollars so then all of those rewards below the 50 dollar reward cost 30 dollars so then you have a nine dollar t-shirt and it's $39. So on your $50 reward tier, you're only netting 11 bucks. Okay? You have to take all of that into consideration. The cost of the reward tiers below added up into your, your new reward tier. And the people who have done this right, I didn't do this perfectly. I did, I did it pretty well. Like I'm going to be able to send out all the rewards. But... Um, there is a couple things that I could have done better, and I'll tell you what those are. But um, people who do this right really, like you can see that the reward levels like kick up like pretty insanely high once you get into the um, once you get into like like the, the the middle range of the rewards. So like something that you wouldn't think is too much to. Um, uh, something that w you wouldn't think that is is um, it's a good example. <clears throat> it's hard to come up with a good example. Um, 
well, for instance, like if you if you're if you're if you have all these reward tiers, and then you have like something like a T-shirt added to all of that, then the T-shirt tier might be three hundred dollars, and you're like, well, that's kind of weird. Well, they th- that person actually really did take into consideration and added up all the ones below it. The second thing you want to um, take into consideration is what can you offer that doesn't cost money to ship. I was very lucky that I have this website and um, a couple of the rewards are not going to cost me anything. And they were, you know, and, and, and if they're included in the below reward tiers, then that's that's fine for me because I don't have to add their cost into anything because I could just send it. One of them is the reward tier that everybody that backed at that level gets access to all of the rigs from the little painter. And I'm going to put those out. All right, They're going to get them. What's that going to cost me? It's going to cost me the, the time it takes to click a button. That's it. Also, we had a couple stretch goals and reward unlocks where if we went over a certain level, I would give out four free videos, and I did. We passed that mark, and then the requests came in and um, started sending out those videos from KennyRoy.com. It cost me just the transfer fee from Amazon S3, and I think it's like two cents or three cents per gigabyte, right? So it cost me all over maybe like 50 bucks to send out like a thousand videos to people who backed at that level, who wanted those videos, okay? So stop for a minute and don't automatically copy the reward tiers that you think are expected of you for doing a short film. Do not. So don't just do, you know, a DVD, a signed poster, a t-shirt, a, uh, a making of uh, video or uh, um, what, what would cost a little bit more money um, like a signed piece of, of artwork from the from the film or anything like that like be very 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 careful don't just automatically copy people let's say that you have something that it, you have like a lot of like uh, Michel Gagne had a ton of his um, statuettes from um, Fairly Twisted Rabbits or insanely twisted rabbits, and um, these you know these um, these little statuettes, and he gave those out, right? Of course, it was the cost of shipping was was you know was pretty high, but he didn't actually have to make that and produce it and whatever. He just he 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 had them already. Very 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 smart. What do you do? What do you have? Maybe you have an Etsy page and you and you sell like you know socks or or scarves or or whatever, and you can. You can just um, sew the the like a, make, make a patch and sew the character's you know face onto like a nice scarf or something like that. And then you have boom, you have your scarves. You have a thousand of these scarves lying around anyway. You know, think very 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 carefully about what you can offer that won't cost you money. Okay, that's very important because a lot of people. And it's been in the news. A lot of people have given out rewards that have like bankrupted the project, and that's really really sad because you know they got people to believe in them. Let me see here. Do not bargain with people. Another common mistake is to say like, "Hey guys, we're almost there." If everybody pledged just one dollar more, then that would put us over our goal or whatever. Don't ever do that. Don't bargain with people because what you what you start doing is you start kind of making the entire thing feel like like a salesy kind of thing, right? And it's not sales. It's I have a dream. Please help me. I need your help to 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 get this dream. All right. That's what it is. Right. So don't don't like. Don't start bargaining. Don't start like making, making it look like a deal. Don't do any of that stuff. Be upfront. Be honest. Be sincere. And if it's um, compelling, people will move towards it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Here's another thing. Don't launch with 
all of the rewards that you're going to have during your project. I launched with 10, and at the end of the funding, there was 16. All right, here's why you do that. There are some people that have a, that, that pledge because they want a certain reward. But they don't want to pledge this much. Let's say it's 50 and $100, okay? They're willing to spend $50 and support your dream for this reward, whatever it may be. For mine, $50 was the DVD, okay? They don't want to spend $100 because that's just, that's just a little bit too much for them. They would spend more, but there's no reward here for that yet. If you wait and introduce, like I say that's a good, that's a good ratio. I launched with 10, by the end I had 16. So like once or twice a week, I would show off a new reward. And if it's in between reward tiers, then people will, will kick up if, if they, they wanted it. And you'll also get people who were even below like the 50, let's say it's, they were at the 25. You'll get people who were at 25, who weren't interested in the 50, interested in the 75, and then they'll get it. And they will, they will be, they'll be your new recruit in terms of uh, uh, spreading the word and getting getting stuff out there. So, um, a good example is the videos from KennyRoy.com. I added that as a reward and showed basically how you're you're kind of getting this reward. You're kind of when you kick up, you're you're getting all you're getting instantly more than your money's worth because we've passed our pledged goal. And if I send you four videos from KennyRoy.com, if you were at 50, then you basically just with the price of the videos at the store, you kind of just made money. Okay, so it was it was it was very easy to kind of get people excited and and to to, to bump up their their pledges. Okay, so um, it's you can't really see it in the graph because the the bump up in pledges you know would have been like sort of a, an insubstantial bump. Actually, you know what I could probably do? I could probably scale this in Photoshop. Let me just see really quickly. I know I know this is a. Uh, I'm not all that interesting, but I just want to see if I can get a little bit more detail in this graph if I if I factor out the launch and the and the finish um, events. So I'm just going to make this image size. Don't don't link it. Let's like triple the. Sorry about that. Let's just triple the. Uh, no, you can't really see. Anyway, never mind. This is what I did. I just tried to... Um, you can't really see. But I, I'm almost positive that I had a, 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 a new reward announcement right here. Um, that was, you know, when that um, big donation came back. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is because people saw I was close to the goal and so they bumped up their, their, uh, their donations and... Um, I, de I definitely, you know, was was pushing hard at the end there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let me see. Let me see. I I have notes here. I want to do. I want want to make sure that I got everything. Yeah, I think I covered everything. Um, I will say that there is a very real amount of um, what I'm calling Kickstarter fatigue. You can't take this lightly. You need to be very enthusiastic and very prepared to kind of like fight for your dream um, these days. Kickstarter itself was a novelty. It, it was like fun to like just like watch it happen, to watch your your dollars poof, go up onto like a board and, and for the, the numbers to climb. These days, everybody knows what it is. Some people have backed some some things that they uh, they got and they kind of didn't like. Like I, I backed this project for a Wacom pen holder that was a ring. And then you put this other ring and it had a magnet. 
and it was supposed to be so that you could write with your Wacom and then you just flick it like this and it and it, it just keeps it on your hand so that you can flick it back down and, and whatever so you can flip it and then type and whatever but I've noticed that if I keep it right here I just hit the space bar with my left hand and I kind of backed this thing, I don't want to tell you the story I backed this thing because I thought it would be so good but I, I, it didn't dawn on me that it's, it was really kind of useless so I got one and I, I, I real regret so I think some people have some some regret or, or the 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 projects didn't turn out or if it was like a product it maybe didn't live up um, like uh, I got an Ouya and it's kind of cool there's, uh, there's some pretty cool games on there but hardware wise it's actually super slow so even though there's some awesome games a lot of the games that people have put a lot of effort into just don't even play well so I'm not sure if that was worth it either anyway so this Kickstarter fatigue, you gotta combat it by being a energetic, excited, in your face, confident, just just demanding that they at least listen to your your dream and give them a way to do it and they will shock you. People who you never knew were interested in what you did. They you you, you think that they, you know, are completely ignoring you or don't care if you live, die, or you know, eat crap. Those people, all of a sudden, they will they will pledge, and it'll 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 shock you. As long as you're as long as it, it comes down to story, and so that's I guess that's where we should end it. I, I started by saying that you know the first and most important thing is story, but really that's kind of has a double meaning because it comes down to your story as much as it comes down to the 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 film story you're giving people you know and some people you don't know the chance to be a part of a story back when I did it people who pledged during the 24-hour animation marathon had a chance to be a part of something that hadn't been done it was a totally new thing and they could say I was there I mean they could say at least that right Give people a give people an inspiring story to be a part of, and they will they will leap at the opportunity to be a part of that story. Okay, so in the end, I guess it does come down to story, but it comes down in in, in more than one way. I hope to see you guys put together some amazing campaigns. I want you to use me. I am a resource. I am at your disposal. I seriously will drop what I'm doing to go take a look at a Kickstarter campaign page before you launch it. I will be your first pledge. Any one of you that makes a, uh, a, uh, a Kickstarter project for a short film, I will be your, short, your first pledge. I will pledge $100 to any one of you that, uh, that does it because that's the least you did for me. You made my dream come true. Okay? So I hope this was useful or at least interesting. Um, and I'm encouraging all of you to please um, get into it. Get into short film. I, th this is like my new passion. I, I want all of us to have an artistic calling card that, that we can just like, you know, go out into the world and, and, and everyone knows that it's us. All right. That's what it is to me. This has been a lot of fun. Remember, you can request more uh, resources like lectures and uh, video mails. There's different places to do that. Video mails, obviously, just send a, a email to webmasterkenyware.com. There is the resource wish list in the forum where you can request lectures and stuff of the sort. This was actually a video mail question that I decided needed a little bit more discussion than a video mail would hold. But um, long story short, here we are. We are at the end. It's been great. I'm Kenny Roy. Good luck with your animation. As always, rock on.